Got another question for the rates of reaction topic. So we're on to number 17 now. This question covers Boltzmann curves, rates tables, and rate determinant step and mechanism. I hope you like the video, and if you haven't already subscribed, why don't you think about subscribing? As always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. Okay, so make a start. So first thing I'm going to do is explain how increasing the temperature increases the rate of reaction uh, using Boltzmann distributions. So obviously the first thing we need to do is put one Boltzmann curve on. So don't forget to label your axes. So it's the number of molecules or particles, you could say, on the y-axis. Energy for the x-axis. And for any Boltzmann curve, it must start at the origin and it must not touch the x-axis at the high energy, so it has to asymptote. So we're going to need another curve to show a different temperature. So you can either draw one at a lower temperature, so that would make this one the higher temperature curve, or you can draw one at a higher temperature, which would obviously make this one the lower temperature. So I'll go for the um, second option, and obviously make sure you label up your curves so the examiner knows exactly which one's which. So now we've got to use these curves to explain the effective temperature on rate. So we need to put the activation energy for the reaction on. So just this vertical line here and just put EA. And we can talk now about the area under the curve after the activation energy. So at the lower temperature... The area under the curve is that, so the, this is the number of particles or molecules that have got enough energy to react, whereas at the higher temperature you can see you've got much bigger area, so that means there's more particles, more molecules with the activation energy or higher, so the rate goes up. So moving on to the rate table now, so the first thing we'll do is work out the order of the nitrogen monoxide. This is the easiest one to start with because the carbon monoxide we can keep constant in experiments 1 and 2. So you can see from experiments 1 and 2 the concentration of the NO doubles, going from that to that. The rate goes up four times, so that means it's second order with respect to NO. For the carbon monoxide, I'm going to use experiments 2 and 3. So you can see that the nitrogen monoxide is um, doubling, but we have the order for that. We know that it's second order. And the carbon monoxide has gone up four times. The rate has gone up 16 times. So I'll just write that out. So if we now think about it in this sort of format, all we need to do is establish what power this X needs to be. That's going to be the order for the carbon monoxide to give that overall increase in rate of 16. And hopefully you can see that X needs to equal 1. So doubling the NO concentration squared is going to give you 4 times 4 to the power 1, which is 4. So 4 times 4 gives you that 16. So now we've got the two orders, we can put the rate equation together and then put some numbers in and get K. So there's the rate equation there, rearranged for K. So I'll just replace these with some numbers. I'm going to use experiment 1. So you should get a K value of 3.37 times 10 to the 6. It doesn't matter which experiment you use, they're all done at the same temperature. So K should always be that number there. Quick look at the units. So we've got moles per decimeter cubed per second on the top and then moles per decimeter cubed squared on the bottom times another moles per decimeter cubed. So there's the units into the K expression there. So we can cancel out moles per decimeter cubed on the top with one of the ones on the bottom. So we're left with seconds to minus one over moles per decimeter cubed squared. So we'll just tidy that all up and bring it everything up to the top, which gives dm to the six mol to the minus two seconds to the minus one. Uh, moving on to part B, so we've got to come up with a possible two-step mechanism for this uh, reaction. Now there's loads of different ways you can do this, but they all must start with two moles of NO2 as reactants in step one. Told that the first step is much slower than the second step, so that's your rate determinant step. And you can see I've highlighted the rate equation because that's telling us that two, second order two, 
moles of NO2 react. So we've got a few options now, but I always do it this way. So I'll look at the overall equation and ask, can I make anything from um, the, the reactants in the rate determinant step? Yep, I can make the NO, so I'll put that in and then just add the atoms that are left together. So that'll give me NO3. Remember the equation's got to balance. And then look at the equation overall. There's no NO3 in that, so we've got to get rid of it. How do we do that? We react it in step two. So it's going to cancel when we add these two steps together. And then try and build up the rest of the equation. So we need a carbon monoxide on the left. So we'll put that in as a reactant in step two. And then we need to get rid of one of the NO2s because there's only one in the overall equation. So if we make that as a product in step two, and we also need a carbon dioxide formed, so CO2 there. And then if you just think about it, the NO3 is going to cancel, and that NO2 is going to cancel with one of these. So you're left with that overall equation, NO2 plus CO gives NO plus CO2. Like I said a minute ago, there's loads of different ways you can do this, but they all have to start with that two moles of NO2.